Yeah, hello and welcome. My name is Career Talks. Uh, welcome to episode number three of my Creating Bots tutorial for uh, Starfield. And today's topic is uh, shapes and sprites inside a JPEG. So it's uh, again about uh, modding the interface and UI. And let's hop right in. Uh, and I just want to point out here right now, I'm not going to show you how to use uh, other tools. I'm only showing you what you want to do in JPEGs to make use of whatever you create, okay? And how the functions are working in JPEGs, okay? So and as first general information, shapes and sprites, what are they? So shapes are basically either images or they are uh, vector gra graphics. I'd name them uh, or basically shapes. And what a vector graphic is, is a, in layman's terms uh, spoken, it is a 2D, 3D graphic, okay? And practically that means, for example, that you can edit points, which you cannot do with a natural image. Okay? You can uh, treat it like it is a model and form it inside JPEGs and uh, um, change its shape and its color and whatever. Uh, and of course you can do that with external tools as well. And uh, let me quickly show you the two tools I'm using for that. That's uh, first, it's Inkscape, which is basically a vector graphic editor, a vector graphic editor, and you can create vector images with it. And I already said what a vector image is, basically a 2D, 3D shape that you can treat like a 2D model, I'd say. And uh, yeah, it's standard hot component in uh, Bethesda game. And the second tool I'm using for texture or image creation is GIMP, which in version 2.10, which is right now, comes with a natural DDS plugin, so you can actually use it to modify textures. But I'm not sure if they have updated the plugin for, uh, to be used with Starfield. I'm not sure about that. You need to figure, and if it is not up to date yet, you will just need to wait until it is. So, which brings us back to JPEGs and shapes, okay? And let's assume you created your image in uh, GIMP or your vector graphics in Inkscape, and you want to bring it into uh, your flash file, and you uh, would want to import it as a uh, uh, image or a shape type, image shape type, okay? And for that example, I'm just going to export uh, so you can see you can export as SVG, which is basically an HTML uh, uh, base type, uh, file type, PNG, HTML5, HTML5, BMP, and SWF. And I'm going to export as a PNG to the desktop for easy access. And I'm just going to rudimentary edit this file because I don't want to show off uh, how you edit those files. Okay? What I want to show off is uh, how to in export and import in JPEGs. Just giving it a red color, uh, save the file. And for example, in GIMP, you would have better access and you would uh, add a background, which is a natural part of PNG. But Paint can't do that, uh, I think. So, and then you go back and you would uh, just, uh, if you are using uh, uh, shapes and images that you have edited, you just go to import. In that case, it's a shape and just open the folder. You don't need to explicitly select the file, but the folder it is, so it's also, uh, the folder it is inside. And so it's also important to keep the folder structure that you have, to, uh, that you have exported, okay? So you just import it and there you go. There you have your <laughs> dirty variant of a new, that's, that's, that's the professional new icon, I'd say. Uh, import it, okay? So that's basically just to show you off. Let's save that file. Uh, how to import, and if you want to do a completely new, as always, add a tag. Let's assume it's a, a fill type, uh, and then you would define shape one. Put it on, not the end of line, but uh, find the right position, which is basically after the last define shape. So it would be that one, right? And as always, it is giving it a custom ID. And then you would uh, need to create a shape with that ID, so 1380, and I'm just going to rename that into 1380, okay? And then you go to import, oh wait, import other. Come on, be a douche. And go here, and, oh, it has actually uh, imported it as image as well, which I didn't want to, but yeah, it's, uh, it's supposed to go here. Oh yeah, right, because I wasn't exporting it as a, uh, uh, I wasn't exporting it in Inkscape, uh, but in, uh, uh, in an image editor, that's why it's treating it as an image, as you can see. That wasn't supposed to happen, but now you also learned what's the difference, yeah? So uh, a vector graphic that you uh, create in Inkscape will be detected by JPEGs as that, and then it will be correctly imported into the shape section. But you can also move that image into the shape section, that's not a problem, okay? Which is not a bad thing at all, what I've just done here, because uh, then I can actually show you how you want to import a actual image. Because there's a little difference here that you want to do. Uh, you want to import image into the image section, which will be uh, auto-created, as I already showed you, when you export an actual image file, which is not a shape. <coughs> and PNG is an image file, and the shape would need to be SVG, I believe. Uh, uh, so you would uh, use, uh, export the PNG in, in any of your graphics editor as SVG, and then you can import it as shape. And I'm going to do that uh, soonish. And here you can see the difference. Uh, an image, you always want to import as a defined bits lossless. And basically what that means is, if you have that image in your game, it doesn't lose any resolution quality, and it doesn't... Uh, uh, lose its shape, so it looks stretched or something like that, okay? So that's how you want to import an image, define it's lossless. And now let's do that one here actually correct, right? Move those two, and let's export the selection as an SVG. Yes. And I hope it does that, we'll see. Giving it, make it black, uh, white, black is FFF, no, white is FFFF. So, save it, and then we'll re-import it. See? And there's now white. See? So that's the difference. Uh, you want an SVG is an actual shape file and a PNG is an actual image. So that was, was my mistake, obviously. But you see the difference, okay? Uh, uh, and 
why is that no longer here? Because I deleted the image and the shape will just pull from the image section and put it into the shape section because I exported that in the wrong way and treat, make it, uh, treat, uh, made it JPEGs treated in the wrong way, okay? So shapes, SVG, images, PNG. Stay with those two, don't go anywhere else. You can, if you have some experience, you can export as an HTML because I think it's going to be treated as a shape as well. That's about it. That's about the uh, 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 importing, exporting part. Let me remove that file quickly because I actually want to test, uh, that, uh, test some of that stuff later in the game. That's why I need an intact uh, file here. And now about what you can do with the shape. Uh, let's take the, uh, the, the line shape here. And as you can see down here, replace. That's uh, also a way to do that. And as you can see, replacing allows you to actually uh, uh, change the file type. And you can replace the single shapes with single files. That's the way how you replace single files, okay? Because if you use import, it will always import the whole folder, uh, um, which is good if you want to mass import stuff. And with that, you can also change file types, okay? Replace update bounds means if you have different bounds and different coordinates, it will import it that way and make it centered so that it doesn't look messed up in the game. Then I already showed you edit the points, so which is basically just manually changing the shape, okay? which is a, a tricky thing to do uh, because there is no uh, lock. It doesn't lock, you know, it's free, it's completely free. You can uh, quickly mess it up if you don't correctly uh, enter the coordinates and stuff like that. And then we have the classical edit, which I already covered in uh, one of the first two videos, and you got all the variables. But you also have the transform section, okay? So here you can choose which transform point. Now this one is selected. Just like this, everything will be selected, you see? Transformation points, you can uh, select them, and then you can do something to that point, or it will cover that point. Then you have uh, basic flipping, basic rotating, basic moving, okay? Uh -huh. You always need to press apply. If you don't like what you did, you just uh, uh, press clear, I think, or cancel. <laughs> press cancel, it's probably better. If you fucked it up, uh, press cancel. Because you, as you can see, I fucked it up after I fucked it up, and so it was even more fucked up. You don't want fucked up stuff. It's just to show off what can be done, okay? And the scaling, that's actually a thing that I was using in one of my mods. So, because what you, you can, if you want to remove a component, you can brute force it. And by brute force, I mean, let's take, for example, you want to remove the floating target, okay, uh, um, icon. You just go and remove, okay? That's brute force. It will work. But it will probably lead to some uh, bug reports in your logs. Nothing dramatically. And sometimes if you remove something which is very essential, it can also crash the game. So you only want to use brute force if you really know, yeah, this doesn't do any damage. For example, in the main menu, you can do that. But I wouldn't recommend doing that in the hub. So, but if you want to remove a, a shape, for example, uh, how would you want to do that? And uh, I would use a scaling zero for that because then, as you've seen, it's just gone, okay? Exit here without saving. Or it, it still exists, that shape still exists, but it doesn't show up because its a scale is zero, okay? So. Oh. And why you want to do it like that? Well, because you can uh, redo that and uh, give it a scale which would be multiplied by 10. I'm not sure right now. Yeah, I did it wrong. I did it once, so basically, um, I don't want to do that now because I would need to fiddle again. I forgot what I actually did. So what, if you basically what I uh, want to sh show off here is if you use the transform scaling, okay, and apply and save that, you can bring it back. You can bring back that image, okay? But if you're not uh, sure that you can do it like it's supposed to be done, you can just back up by exporting that uh, shape, and then you can bring it back in, like I've already showed you. And you can rotate it, you can screw it, you can change the matrix, so meaning uh, the individual pixels and stuff like that, and you can copy it. And that's basically about a shape, okay? So you can uh, modify the in-game shapes to your heart's content, as I already showed you, okay? All of that stuff. Give it a new form, give it a new shape, give it a new color, whatever you want to do. And now we're going to go to the second part, and I'm going to do a short break here because I need to drink something. See you in a second or so. Yeah, and here we are with part number two of episode three. We're going to treat sprites now. And I've yet to find out what a sprite actually is because I'm using the translator uh, and um, use uh, that word. It will give me Sprite, okay? So there's no German equivalent to Sprite, so Sprite basically is a soft drink in German, and I'm quite sure that this is not a uh, soft drink. It's probably also not a Leprechaun or a Pocker or a Goblin or whatever. I'm not sure what a Sprite is, but I know or I understand what a Sprite in JPEGs for me has to be. It basically is a conglomerate, I'd say it, of shapes put into frames. And frames are, you probably already heard that, uh, images are made of frames, and uh, videos or images are not made of frames. Videos are made of uh, single frames. So basically, if you make a video, all it does is a camera running at high speed doing, I don't know how many images per second. And uh, also, if you look at your monitor, you don't have a permanent uh, video, I'd say, uh, not a permanent run. You have, in my case, 144 images per second running uh, over the monitor. That's basically what a frame is. And that's basically what the shape inside a sprite inside a frame is, okay? So one shape is, uh, makes the form or the shape for what you, is getting displayed in the frame. And that's a single frame. Let's go to a good example here. A floating target is made of nine frames, and you can see if you could count them, you see down here, one, two, three, four, wait, you can pause them, right? No, you can jump to, where's the pause? Ah, there you are, okay, so. There you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are uh, the nine variants of that particular sprite, frame variants, okay? And those shapes are inside those frames. 
Okay, so that basically defines the sprite for me. I, I'm, as I've already said in the first two videos, I'm not an IT professional, so I cannot tell you uh, uh, um, how the exact terminology is here. But I don't need to know that. I need to know in this editor how it actually works. Okay, so basically, I'm repeating here what I was saying already in one of the first two videos. Shapes, uh, sprites are made of shapes and uh, have frames inside which define the single image on my monitor. Like that, okay? Or put simply, sprites are made of shapes. <laughs> okay, that's even simpler, and that's probably the, the thing that you want to go with. So, because that means basically you create shapes and then you create your sprites, and then you will have an animation or something you can work with inside the scripts or uh, can put text on and stuff like that, okay? So, and about a sprite, there is actually not more to say because, as I already said, the sprites are made of single shapes, and that's the creation, and the sprite is only what's uh, displaying it on uh, the hot element. So, in the sprite section, you define how the shape should act, okay? That's all you can do here. And uh, you can you have also the same tools as for the shape. And uh, um, uh, basically, it's true what I already said in the first in one of the first two videos. Uh, if you want to cover all instances instances of uh, one set shape, you would edit the shape. And if you want to uh, uh, address a particular sprite, like for example, let's say you want to change the shotgun. Uh, no, that's a, a different uh, SWF. You want to change only the health bar animation to go in the other direction. You would just flip it. See, uh, you would just uh, uh, you can also uh, edit single frames, or you can edit the whole sprite as a whole, and then you just. Uh, uh, Basic flip vertically. No? Okay. Or let's say so. <laughs> it's just a show off, okay? So you, you want to have a hot element that is not uh, going vertically. Or something. So you see, and it's doing that for the whole uh, hot bar. So that's where you edit or change the actual on screen behavior. Uh, as I said, I don't know how to perfectly terminal, uh, termin, term, terminal lip it. Yeah, that's a word. <clears throat> so, and that's basically about it, okay? So I don't know what I should, because you cannot uh, import shapes. That's probably also wrong terminology because uh, you create shapes in actual flash creation tools like Adobe uh, Creativity Suite uh, 6 it is, uh, which I'm going to use. I have that on my other computer and just need to install it first. But since I updated to a new computer, that's also why my desktop is so empty. This is all going to take some weeks, I'd say. And yeah, that's basically about shapes and sprites, okay? So that's what you want to uh, um, import your specific icon. Some people just name it icon as well. And here you can control the animation and the behavior on the hot. And text we already covered. Morph shapes is a special type of shape. Which to me is basically the same as a sprite, only it doesn't work with frames, but it is already uh, um, like as if you were importing a, a GIF, a GIF, okay? For me, a morph shape is acting like a GIF, so it's pre uh, animated uh, before you import it. And sprites are actually animated by uh, various frames, okay? That's the difference here. Text we already covered. Uh, frames is the actual final frame that will be displayed on your hut with all components, with all sprite components, as you can see. Others, yeah, um, we don't need to cover that because it only gives you the information what you uh, put into the SWF file. And scripts is going to be a topic in either episode 4 or 5 because scripts. It's not for the faint of heart, let me put it like that, because uh, the in-game script editor is experimental, but you have the P-code editor. But I want to take an illusion from you right here. You cannot decently edit or create or make scripts with JPEGs if you don't have some experience, okay? So it's not easy to do that, and you can mess up uh, a lot of stuff easily. And yeah, so basically that's about it. That's shapes and sprites. That's all you need to know or for the basics for the start. And you need to fiddle out. I just showed you what you can do. And you need to fiddle around and figure your way with those uh, things. And yeah, I guess that's about it. Episode 4, uh, four will be about uh, script editing and... Until then, my name is Kriatox. Have fun modding the game. I'm out.